All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing Jarvis in Iron Man 2 and just looking at if we were to build this in real life, what would it take? What technologies are needed to build a system like this? We're going to be breaking down the famous workshop scene at the start of the film, but I might just do a few more scenes in other videos, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and let's get going. Wake up, Daddy Sean. Welcome home, sir. Okay, so straight off, Tony is waking up the system not by saying, wake up, daddy's home. He's actually just clapping on the system, which is awesome. It's a blast from the past. We had clap-activated systems way back in the 80s and the 90s and in labs way before that. And so this is kind of just nostalgia for the audience, and it's definitely something technology can do today. And you'll notice that Jarvis is powering up the system before Tony even says, wake up, daddy's home. Jarvis already knows what's needed. He's already waking up. And Tony Tony saying wake up daddy's home might not even be a command, it might be just something that he's saying just to give the scene a little bit more character. It's not really needed for Jarvis's purposes. Congratulations on the opening ceremonies, they were such a success, as was your seventh year. And may I say how refreshing it is to finally see you in a video with your clothing on, sir. Now this is a really important scene because it shows that Jarvis is always on and he's always learning as Tony is going around his business. He's saying it's refreshing to see you in a video finally with your clothing on, sir. It's funny, the audience laughs, but also Tony laughs. And that means that Jarvis is not only able to watch the internet for Tony-related content when Tony's out and about, he's also able to understand it enough to crack a joke. And this is something that our famous natural language systems are only really just learning to do. They're learning to understand and crack jokes. But this is a new development that we haven't really been able to do until recently. So when this film came out, this technology was, was fiction, complete fiction. But now it's actually real. It's actually happening, which is super exciting. God, I'll dismantle you, I'll soak your motherboard, I'll turn you into a wine rack. Now you'll notice that Tony was just talking to Jarvis, and then something else happened. You, his basically pet robot, knocked over this drink. Um, and, but what's interesting is that Jarvis knew that Tony wasn't talking to him. He knew that Tony was talking to you. That's a little confusing. But basically, Jarvis is able to understand when to talk and when not to talk without Tony keep saying Jarvis's name, which is really interesting. Let's carry on. We are up to 80 ounces a day. Now this is this is crazy. So what's just happened is Tony has said a really complicated thing. How many ounces a day of this gobbledygook are we up to? Now gobbledygook is just a placeholder word. It doesn't really mean anything and I guarantee the drink that he's drinking is not called gobbledygook. But Jarvis is still able to understand what Tony means. Now this is called what we called mask wording, uh, sorry word masking in the natural language world where we basically hide a word from the computer and then we ask the computer to predict the word and then the computer predicts the word hopefully it's the right word and that way it's able to understand the whole sentence as well as predict what might be happening in the future of the conversation as well so this is real technology that exists now and it was only just starting to exist when this film came out this is such a natural conversation we do this all the time we make up words we drop them in conversations and we just know what each other are talking about but for a computer to do that it's really really hard this is something that siri and alexa and google assistant they just can't do at the moment if you say um what's the gobbledygook do doing it's not going to ask it's not going to understand that you're asking about the weather it's just not as advanced but we do have systems in labs things like gpt3 that are able to do this now which is just mind-blowing counteract the symptoms, sir. Check palladium levels. Now, this is really interesting because Tony is using this kind of half-baked prototype medical scanner to measure his blood toxicity. If you've seen the films, you kind of understand why he's doing this. But the interesting thing about this is that it just looks like this prototype device but Jarvis is able to connect to it. And, and in real life, if we were to build this, it would just be Wi-Fi connected. But you'll notice in a minute. Blood toxicity, 
24%. Jarvis is hooked up to this tiny little device. Now, it might be over Bluetooth, it might be over the network, over Wi-Fi, or it could be that there's a camera above Tony's head looking down at the desk and reading the display as Tony would, and that's how he's collecting the information. I highly doubt that that's how you would build it in real life. I would just connect it over Wi-Fi to Jarvis's network. It appears that the continued use of the Iron Man suit is accelerating your condition. Now, there's a little pause there. He, he read out the blood toxicity. Then there was a pause in the conversation. And then he said, it appears that the continued use of the Iron Man suit is accelerating your condition. So what's happened there is that Jarvis has gone away, processed the results he just got from the scanner, and now he's reaching a conclusion based on the latest results. So there's a the little pause there while Jarvis goes away and calculates what does, what does this mean? What does this blood toxicity reading mean? Love the interface here. It's very easy to understand. There's a lot going on, but it's familiar to us. We've got these awesome windows, these awesome animations. You can tell that it's a chest scan. You can tell that it's monitoring the arc reactor. Really cool UI work. Maybe difficult to understand from an actual usability point of view, but it looks awesome. Another core has been depleted. Now this is cool. Jarvis probably isn't connected to the arc reactor at this stage in the franchise, but he's able to calculate that the core that's inside Tony's chest is already depleted based on the recent reading of the blood toxicity. At least that's how I interpret the scene. So Tony doesn't know it's depleted because it's inside of him and he's being told by Jarvis another one's been depleted, you need to replace it. God, they're running out quick. I have run simulations on every known element, and none can serve as a viable replacement for the Palladium Core. Jarvis just ignored Tony. So Tony said, God, they're running out quick. And this is something that Jarvis has only just stated. He, he knows they're running out quick. He just told Tony that one was depleted. So, so Tony is stating the obvious, and because of that, Jarvis has worked out that Tony is stating the obvious, and he's just not responding, because it doesn't really matter. He's already said what he needs to say. Now Jarvis is moving on to the next topic, which is how the these simulations are going. Now, this is something that very recently computer computer simulations for this sort of level of scientific research are really making some breakthroughs. If you look at AlphaFold and the work that DeepMind is doing, they're able to synthesize new medica medication, new uh, physics breakthroughs through just using artificial intelligence. So this is definitely something that was a little bit down the line um, in terms of being in the future when they made the film. But now this is actually starting to, to come true. We're starting to see new drugs synthesized by AI and all sorts. So this is really interesting. You are running out of both time and options. And one other comment about this whole scene is that Jarvis is breaking up the conversation. He could have just said this all at once, but he's pausing in between. And now that's to let the audience catch up and to figure out like Tony's not very well, something's going on here. But actually in real life, having a conversation, it requires pauses and breaks and uh, you allow the other person you're talking to to catch up on what you've said. This is really important. Again, this is something that Siri, Alexa, they don't do right now. But Jarvis is doing it, and this is what gives him this sense of intelligence and this sort of much more powerful companionship between Tony and Jarvis. He knows what rate of speaking he needs to do in order for Tony un to understand what's going on. Unfortunately, the device that's keeping you alive is... Another pause. Miss Potts is approaching. I recommend that you inform Mute. her... Of now that's really interesting, that's basically the end of the Jarvis scene, but you can see that Tony is having this conversation with the Jarvis, but it's not the only thing that Jarvis is doing. He's also monitoring the whereabouts of Pepper Potts at all times. He's notifying Tony that Pepper Potts is approaching, which he deems relevant at the moment because they're talking about something quite private. And he's also saying, you should probably tell her. And at that point, Tony wants to keep it a secret. So he doesn't tell, he tells Jarvis to mute. And what's interesting is that Jarvis mutes the music and his own voice, but he doesn't mute the sound effects. You can still hear the house's sound effects, which I'm guessing is the same system as Jarvis as Pepper taps into the room. So Jarvis understands the context of mute. Of mute. It's a contextual um, command, which means mute might mean, if Tony was to say mute now, maybe the sound effects would disappear as well. But Jarvis has deemed that talking and music need to be muted. Sound effects are fine in this context, but maybe in other contexts it would be different and only the music would be muted, for example. Uh-uh. Is this a joke? What do you 
Notice that Tony is also drinking his uh, drink very fast there. What? What are you thinking? Hey, I'm thinking I'm busy and you're angry about something. And as we finish this scene, you'll notice that Jarvis isn't talking at all. He's been told to shut up, and that is what he's doing. He's ignoring everything that's going on. He's not letting anything out while, t while Pepper is in the room, because he understands he's just been given a command to mute, but also he understands that Tony isn't telling Pepper something, and that he needs to keep that from Pepper. This is like user access to a whole new level, where Jarvis is able to work out which users of the Jarvis system, because you bet Pepper also has an account on Jarvis, which user is allowed to know which parts of different conversations. This is really, really, really quite mind-blowing because it it shows that there's a deeper understanding of the conversations Tony and Jarvis are having, and then that Jarvis is able to basically classify those conversations on public things that Pepper and other people can know about and private things that are kept between just Jarvis and Tony and that's something that Tony isn't explicitly saying he's just saying mute or he's just saying I'm not going to tell her yet and Jarvis is able to hold a secret which is mind-blowing now as the films evolve Jarvis gets more and more advanced and we're going to break them down here so make sure you hit the subscribe button and if you want to see my version of Jarvis you can head over to TikTok just search for my name Hugh Prosser and you can see the progress of the system over there and occasionally I live stream with him as well. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't seen the first video go and check it out and I'll see you later.